Hey guys, we're so excited to be able to share with you our floor plan and 3D model today. I know it's been a long time since we've uh, given you any details, but know this, we've been hard at work uh, doing a lot of things that need to be done that don't make very good video. <laughs> uh, talking to contractors, going up to the property to look at dirt and rocks and uh, septic plans and uh, really not very much fun, but necessary. And today we've got uh, the floor plan and 3D model that we're going to uh, show to you. So we spent a lot of time with Andrew kind of working through how we live um, and uh, so that the space suits us. And uh, it's going to be about half the size, uh, a little less than half the size of the house we're in now. It'll be about 1,600 square feet, um, two bedroom, two bath, uh, very simple. Uh, so we had to make sure that the space worked for us. So Jody, tell us uh, a little bit about kind of the things that you like and uh, how we arrived at some of those. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we did was towards the garage end where we would be coming in and out daily. We wanted to have an area there that would um, we could drop off the groceries, take off our shoes, um, that kind of thing. So this down here is going to be our, our entrance from the garage. So right here is where we put our laundry and our workspace. Um, just a fun fact, since it is a passive house, we will not have a, a dryer. We'll have a, a washing machine. But then this right here is, uh, we're going to go back to Europe style, I guess, and use a drying closet. So we'll hang wet clothes in there, and then there will be a, an air circulation system in there that will dry our clothes for us. Now, we don't want to get too much in the weeds, but the reason we can't have a dryer is not so much the electricity you, that we'll use because we will have solar panels uh, and we'll have electricity that will be ample for that, but we can't vent the dryer effectively and not break the airtight uh, seal of the house, which is a big part of the passive construction, which we'll get into in another video. But uh, we don't want to be able to have to vent that through the exterior wall. So this is a really long space right here uh, what is that, about 50, just about 55 feet. So what's this space here going to be? We're going to have a little sitting area down here, maybe a reading nook. There's nice big windows down here. Um, and then this will be our main living space, kind of our living room. We'll have uh, our television in there. And as you come a little bit closer to the kitchen, we'll have our dining area with our table and things like that. Um, this is obviously the kitchen area with a nice, big, uninterrupted uh, island. No sink, no stove, no nothing in there. Just a nice big workspace um, with all of the kitchen essentials, with the stove, the sink, the refrigerator. And then back in here is going to be where we'll have the pantry. Um, it'll kind of be a walk through into the extra bathroom. Jack and Jill. Yeah, Jack and Jill, and then also um, into our guest bedroom, which uh, there is another entrance into the bedroom right up here close to the laundry area and workspace. Um, so coming back out here to the kitchen, dining, living area um, is going to be our, this will be our guest main entrance right here. Um, and then straight across from that will be another door where we can come out into this open space here, kind of an intimate little garden area where we can just sit and relax. And um, right here is also that rock outcropping yeah. that we're budding the house up close to. So it'll be just a nice little um, serene area to just come and sit and relax. And that's, that's the main reason that the house is very long. It's, uh, just under 85 feet long, but it's very narrow, uh, only about 25 feet. Um, and so uh, for those of you who do math really quick, you think, wait a second, that's more than 1600 square feet, but the exterior wall is actually, uh, about 15, uh, plus inches thick. 
uh, with the airtight seal and the uh, cellulose insulation and wool insulation. And so um, uh, the windows in those walls will actually be deep enough to have benches in all of the windows to be able to sit. So that'll create some nice little spaces for us just to be able to sit and enjoy the view. Um, and the windows here are floor to ceiling. So uh, we'll have an incredible view uh, from a variety of places throughout the house. When we actually mapped out uh, the footprint up at the space uh, last week, we were able to stand for the first time and kind of see where those uh, view, views were and what we would see and pretty excited about that. So then out of the kitchen, uh, we'll go into this space, which is, we're calling it a flex space. And so this will be our office, because uh, we will be running our businesses from the house still. And But we want these walls, we haven't figured out all the details here, but this will open and close somehow so that most of the time it's open to this main living area. Uh, and then we go up into the master bedroom wing, I guess, if it's a wing. Uh, and so there'll actually be four or five steps up and the bedroom is going to be raised up above the rest of the house about four or five feet. And that will allow this main floor to actually continue underneath the bedroom and we'll have access uh, here and then probably a hatch somewhere in the master bedroom. Uh, so we'll be able to access that space for storage. Um, which we're really excited about. And it also follows the landscape there a little bit. Um, and it, it, it looks architecturally really cool from the outside, which we'll show you when we go to the 3D model downstairs at my desk. Um, so tell me about the master bedroom. Master bedroom is just gonna have some nice, uh, two nice big windows in it. Right here and here. And uh, so we'll get that nice east morning sun. And uh, we have a decent sized closet. And also a bathroom, double sink, shower, toilet, everything you need. Um, the thing that Brian missed, uh, is down here by the stairs, <laughs> is another one of those big windows that you can sit in. And so this area right here will have just kind of a an area also to sit in and gather in and um, yep. enjoy the view. And so this will actually be the stairs will kind of be built into that uh, bench window. So it almost the stairs and the window become almost a piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. So that's a quick overview of the floor plan. Again, it's very long and sk uh, skinny because we needed to fit it between. There's a tree right here and the rock croppings. Uh, right here. So now, uh, and we didn't show you the garage, which is not on uh, these blueprints or uh, drawings, uh, but we can show you that uh, on the 3D model. So let's do a quick uh, walk through of the 3D model. So we'll transition from what we were just looking at upstairs, the floor plan with the addition of the garage and breezeway added. And you can kind of start to see it take shape when we tilt it back and kind of do an extrusion. So uh, what's interesting is the, the breezeway and the garage, which we're just seeing a, a kind of a split cross section. The top of it is cut off, but that'll be a pole barn construction. Uh, so it won't be passive. This breezeway and there'll be a fireplace that you'll be able to see from inside the house. Uh, and the fireplace or insert there uh, will not only create a nice little uh, place to gather uh, out on this deck, but it will also heat the garage uh, thermally uh, since that will be its only source of heat, really. You can also kind of start to see how uh, the bedroom is raised up above the rest of the house. And you can also start to see some of the dimension of the thickness of these windows, so they'll actually create these benches. Um, And then you can also start to see how this is raised up and you have access underneath that bedroom space for uh, storage, which will be wonderful. 
So that's kind of an extrusion of the floor plan. You can start to see a little bit of the dimension of it. You can kind of see the back side. But the big reveal is this. So this will be uh, eye level, uh, kind of a rendering of the completed house. The trees uh, are pretty accurate for location and size. And so you'll see that they're tucked up right against these trees. And then to that rock outcropping in the back. So this green building is the current construction cabin or shed. Uh, and that will be torn down when we're done with the house. So if you come into the property at eye level uh, to the cabin, you really won't see much of the house at all, but you'll see this bridge. Uh, and that's where you'll enter. You'll come out across this bridge uh, to views uh, facing south down Eden Valley. Beautiful views. Uh, we can see the reservoir and the hogbacks and it's just outstanding. On a clear day, you can actually see all the way down to Pikes Peak, uh, which is several hours away from us. So if we swing over, you'll start to see the inside of a wall. <laughs> uh, you'll start to see this little garden area that's created with uh, the space between the rock outcropping and the back of the house. So the garage actually sits four feet below this level, eight feet below the bedroom level. And so it's actually able to be close to 20 feet tall and not really overwhelm uh, the house architecturally. And so that'll allow us to have a 10-foot garage door if we need to get uh, the tractor or something larger in to work on it, an 8-foot garage door. And then above this space, about a 20 by 22-foot loft that we'll build uh, it down the road here sometime. But the bridge is really the star of the show. And so you'll come right off the rock outcroppings across the top of the house, down with the views of the forest and the valley, a little deck to kind of pause and take in the view and then walk down the stairs, uh, down around the tree and into the front door. Um, last final thing is the building is going to be metal uh, with this cantilever roof and uh, deck. So this will all be metal. We're not sure of the color, maybe a little darker than this. But then this other material here that uh, wraps the side of the building we're actually looking at cork. Uh, so it's uh, completely renewable, actually is carbon negative and doesn't burn. So uh, all very important things to consider when you're living in the middle of the woods. One last thing that I'd like to show you is uh, part of uh, the passive design. So if I go and I let's turn on the shadows, Right now, the date is set at January 1st at 10.04 a.m. And so if I back this up to sunrise, you'll see the sun rises in the east, which is over here. We face south. Uh, and so as the sun comes up in the morning, it just starts to flood the inside of the house. So you can see through the windows, the sun just flooding the inside of the house to warm it all throughout the entire day. So... Obviously, uh, in the colder months, that's ideal. But when we get into uh, May, June, July, the summer months, do that same thing. You'll notice that very little light gets into the house. So uh, with the house being airtight and then passively heated, we'll be able to maintain a good temperature even through the summer by keeping the sunlight out of the house with the strategic placement of the house next to the trees and the cantilever over the windows uh, allows us to keep uh, the light out of the house when we need to.
So there you have it, our floor plan and our model. Uh, we are very excited to start this here in the next few weeks and uh, see it uh, really take shape. Yep. We thank you so much for coming along on this journey with us. Um, if you have any questions, things that we didn't cover today on our floor plan, you can always send us a question in the comments and we will uh, respond to those. So stay tuned. We'll always have more updates coming soon. Thank you. See ya.